Welcome to SoFlo TV again, everybody. It's your host of the most. So, Sans Masha, right? This is a huge uh, party event that happens not only in Canada but in other locations as well. Which someone linked me up and said, Yo, SoFlo, you know, see another member of the British Link Up crew just drop out. Slap wet, as we call it. By the way, matter of fact, let me say something out here. When you see anybody else using the word slap wet, it was I who started using the word slapware and the reason I did was because the M word, right, is not the word that you want to use on YouTube else they do something special with your video that you don't want them to do. Put it that way, nicely. So, whoever else is using it, then that's, I mean, it's fine. It's slang, it's lingo that we use among our people. I didn't create the word, but I was the first vlogger to start using it to evade certain things. Now everybody I use Slapway. Now we know what Slapway mean. Now the videos are getting dinged because everybody I use Slapway. So, someone linked me up and said, Yo, so Flo, you know, sister, um, another member of the British Link Up crew, things go on. And uh, I said, I don't know, I have to go look it up. But in the process of looking it up, I came across this headline that says, Five men in one year after being deported to Jamaica. Five in one year, you know. So, and it, this is by Mecca Beresford, and it was, um, I'm sourcing this from a human rights website, right? Rightsinfo.org. It says, at least five men have been in the year since they were deported to Jamaica from the UK, and many more Deportees have been left living in fear for their lives. The government does not keep records on people after they have been deported, but an investigator found that Owen Clark, 62 years old, Dwayne Robinson, 37 years old, Alfonso Harriet Orwani, 56 years old, Paul Mitchell, 50 years old, and Hugh Bennett, 48 years old were all deported after March of 2018 have been killed. Many more people that spoke to the outlet said that they fear for their own lives because of commonplace violence in Jamaica. One man said, I need to get out of Jamaica ASAP because it is never safe here. Every day I hear someone else who is in danger. Sometimes there are up to about nine murders in one week. People walking down the street with guns on them is a common thing. Just like someone walking in the UK carrying a bottle of water down the street. And this is someone who was recently deported from the UK. Living in fear in Jamaica. The man whose two children remain in the UK is trying to raise the legal funds to fight to return to the UK since cases like his are beyond the scope of legal aid. I need to get out of Jamaica. It is never safe. Never safe, he said. Jamaica was one of the highest murder rates in the world. Has one of the highest murder rates in the world to date. With 47 per 100,000 people. In the UK, there are about 12 per 1 million people. Some of the deportees say that their pictures were published in the Kingston paper when they landed, making them a target to violence. Now you have to remember, some man do some things on runway, you know. You know what I'm saying? And I remember I said, uh, when I, I don't think it's a wise idea for when they're coming into the country, they do this. The UK sends back a plane, chartered flight lands in Jamaica with 47 on board. And then news reporters are standing there taking pictures of everybody and then putting it on the front page and all that. I said back then and still do now that Whoever went away, ran for their life, got out, and are back now and just landed, 
they just made them a prime target because someone is sitting around saying, yo, you know, sister, the boy, Juba does land. Go for him, dog. Make him know say it's not over. Uh, we not play nice and uh, we not forget nothing. Yeah. Whether it's because they snitched on somebody and ran away, whether it's because they stole somebody things, whether it's because them harm injured somebody in some way, something is going to go down because now they are on front page, right? Right? It is believed. Now they're saying it is a clear breach of human rights legislation to send people back to a country where their life could be in serious danger. And this is Naga Kandia, a public law solicitor in the UK. He's saying it is a clear breach of human rights legislation to send people back to a country where their life could be in serious danger. And it's the same thing they're having here in the US where right now Trump is saying everybody is running into the US and is filing for, uh, what's it called? Oh, I'm looking for the word. Damn, it just slipped me. But he doesn't want to give it to them. Asylum. Sorry. He's filing for asylum. And, and they're saying that under the asylum laws, it's a clear breach of human rights legislation. Because you know that they're running for their lives. It's like someone comes knocking at your door. Hey, please open up the door. Hide me, hide me. Someone's coming in. They're going to kill me. He already shot me in my arm. And the arm is bleeding and everything. And you close the door and leave them outside. And you're like, you better run to another house because you're not coming in here. Were you right for doing so? Because you were protecting your family members inside of your house. And you want no parts of that drama that's outside your door. Or were you wrong? Could you have saved a life? It's a 50-50. You know what I'm saying? Now, it is believed that the men who were killed may have been involved in gangs and drug dealings. But Naga Kandia, a public law solicitor, explained that the UK and the Home Office have a responsibility to ensure the safety of those they are deporting, regardless of their background especially as it is prohibited to deport someone to a country where their life may be in danger. If that's the case, then the UK should never deport anybody from Jamaica back to Jamaica. I'm just saying. Nobody is saying that all these men had not committed crimes. But it is a clear breach of human rights legislation to send them back to a country where their life could be in danger. A spokeswoman for the End Deportations Campaign group added, It's sickening, but sadly, not surprising that people who the Home Office have deported have been killed. These deportations must be stopped immediately before more lives are lost. The UK's Human Rights Obligations Five men who told the Guardian they feared for their lives were some of the first people to be deported after the 2018 Wind Rush scandal. Five men told the Guardian that they feared for their lives if they were deported. So, reading this right now, do we... Is it safe to say that people like Father Fall, Wani, and all of them, they knew it was coming? Is it safe to say that? And I was under the impression that Wani and Father Fall was in Jamaica way before 2018. Why is this saying that it was after 2018 that they were deported? Someone leave me the details in the comment section below. It does not make the rest of what we're reading here irrelevant, but those dates. Anyways, five men who told The Guardian that they feared for their lives were some of the first people to be deported after the 2018 Winworth scandal, where it was revealed that children of Caribbean parents who came to live in the UK between 1948 and 1971 were being detained and deported for not having citizenship paperwork despite never knowing any other home except for the UK. 
And remember the Windrush scandal was something huge because when these people came in, they were given indefinite leave of stay. And they never thought about having to get paperwork to prove throughout their lifetime that they were. They just thought, okay, came here under mom and pop, so I'm good. And then decades later, it's show me your paperwork. Well, damn, I don't have any because uh, they didn't think it was necessary for me to get any. But, well, you're illegal. You have to go. And I'll tell you what. A lot of these people lost their houses, their flats, their jobs, their good career fields that they were in for years looking ready to retire, their pension, all this stuff got sent back. And then some have been brought back. In light of the revelations by the Guardian, okay, the detention and deportation of these people was found to be a total violation of their human rights by the Joint Committee of Human Rights. In their report, the committee called for a more humane approach to immigration enforcement, which would stop a repeated scandal. In light of the revelations by The Guardian, charities have accused the Home Office of failing to improve its immigration policies and, rather, adding an additional punishment by putting these people in danger. It is incredibly disturbing that the government continues to pursue these deportation at the expense of human rights obligation, says Gracie Bradley, policy and campaigns manager of Liberty. It is incredibly disturbing and the government continues to pursue these, which stipulate that people must not be deported to situations where they face threats of their life, torture, or ill treatment, explained Grace Bradley, the policy and campaign manager of Liberty. These worrying incidents further highlight why the practice of deportation post conviction is a discriminatory form of double punishment that should also be scrapped. So, what they're saying is if you commit a crime in that country, and say for instance, you have paperwork to be there legally. You're good on your paperwork. You're not an illegal immigrant. This is where you're living, right? You've been living here. You put your roots down here. You have women and children here, wife and all that. House, properties, cars, everything, business, whatever. You commit a crime. You do your time there. You should be allowed to get back out to society as a rehabilitated individual and continue on with life. So why the double punishment? You commit a crime there, you do the time there. After you do the time there, you are deported back to a country that you left long ago to leave behind all the things you built there. That's double punishment. And they're saying that that in itself is wrong. What do you think about that? What says you? Leave your comments in the comment section below on that one. A home office spokesman said, that those who were deported had no legal right to remain in the UK. Individuals are only returned to their country of origin when the Home Office and courts deem it as safe to do so. That's not true. Should the Home Office receive any specific allegations that a returnee has experienced ill treatment on return to their country of origin? These could be investigated in partnership with the Foreign Commonwealth Office, a spokesperson said. Good luck on that, because that makes no damn sense. So if you send me back to Jamaica, right, after I told you, look, I came here 20 years ago running for my life, right? I'm 45 now. Yes, I did commit a crime, but I did 10 years in your prison for it. If you send me back there, the people who I was running from, they've already killed my brother and my cousin, and I'm sure if I land there, they're going to kill me as well. And you still send me back there. How is it that the UK is going to work with Jamaican authorities to make sure that I am safe and I am not being threatened and all this other stuff? Do you know how difficult that coordination would be? First of all, you must think about the corruption in the country of that you're sending these people back to. I am sure there's somebody that would say, working on the inside, dirty police, 
who's gonna go link the people yes him come in yesterday you know yeah and the boy I work with me too because him tell we say if you tell the UK say if you come get him because Uno are threaten him yeah man him have video surveillance and everything fly him on fly out alright dash him before him fly out then simple Leave your comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. And do you think that based on this that I just read and told you that one British and um, Fatherfall and the rest of the other three, do you think that they all knew ahead of time that it was going to be this for them? I mean, it is documented that they told the Guardian that their lives were in danger if they returned. So that was Owen Clark, 62 years old, Dwayne Robinson, 37 years old, Alfonso Harriet, which is Wani, 56 years old, Paul Mitchell, which is 50, and Hugh Bennett, which was 48. All deported and all of them get dashed away. After telling the system in the UK that we are in danger if we are deported. Leave your comment in the comment section below. I'm out. Peace.